Hey guys, Fox here. I uh, wanted to get to my uh, top games of 2017 uh, as soon as possible here, as uh, I've been slacking and haven't gotten to it yet, and we're already a week into January, so. Um, but I will get to it. So, first things first is that this is uh, just my personal uh, top five games of. 2017 and this doesn't necessarily mean that the games were released in 2017 either um, I'm actually pretty sure looking through them that most of them were I do have one honorable mention that I'm going to mention first but uh, but yeah so I played a lot of games that were re released earlier in the year and some games didn't make the list as they you know they were average they were fun or short titles that I enjoyed to play in between you know uh, playing through lengthy RPGs and stuff like that, but uh, um, let's try not to make this video too terribly long, and we'll start off with my honorable mention, and that is uh, Dragon Quest Builders. Um, I think this came out in 2016, but I didn't get around to playing it until early uh, 2017. Uh, this was a surprise to me. Very fun. I uh, actually went through and platinum this one as I played through it. I played halfway through, I don't know, I played through it two complete times and got the Platinum Trophy. And the second time was pretty hard as you had to kind of run through the game very fast. So that that added a fun challenge to it and very enjoyable. So it's it, it's very Minecraft-y, uh, except not everything is blocks, you know. So when you make furniture or items and stuff or the character himself, uh, they're just regular looking Akira Toriyama style art style characters and all that uh, it's just all the building materials are the cubes so it's it's a lot of fun a lot of strategy you can uh, just horse around in it if you want they got a just a basic builders mode uh, survival mode and uh, then the campaign mode uh, the campaign mode is a lot of fun I highly highly suggest it but uh, there's my honorable mention so, number five is something that came out fairly recently, um, and it was something I was looking forward to for quite a while. It was delayed a couple of times, um, but uh, it, 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 was, it, it made me happy, <laughs> and that's uh, South Park, The Fractured Butthole. Um, really enjoyed this. Uh, picking this up is highly worth it, I'd say, to anybody, because not only do you get The Fractured Butthole, but... Uh, you also get a digital copy of the Stick of Truth. So this was like a 20-hour episode of South Park. Very well written, lots of humor. Uh, they did a fine upgrade to the battle system over the Stick of Truth. Um, and I enjoyed the whole uh, superhero arc that was has been going on in South Park for quite a while with uh, uh, the Coon and Mysterion and Professor Chaos and all that stuff from the show. So I had a lot of fun with this. Um, the battle system was much better. It was more of a, a grid-based strategy style instead of the one from the Stick of Truth. Um, one thing I will say is that I think I might slightly enjoy Stick of Truth over the Fractured Butthole. Um, and that's pretty much because of the story. I enjoyed the Stick of Truth story better than the Fractured Butthole. But uh, the battle system in the fractured is far superior so yeah that's my number five number four um these number four and number three were uh, kind of a battle i couldn't decide which game i actually enjoyed more um but i decided that i'm going to drop this down to number four and you'll see my number three number four is the first game i got for the switch and that is zelda breath of the wild um, I know a lot of people are marking this as game of the year, and deservingly so. I, I, it definitely can be there, and I can see why. Uh, but for me, this didn't grab me wholeheartedly. Um, I didn't feel the need to be a completionist with, completionist with this game like I do with my favorite games. Um, but I really enjoyed it, and it definitely came up to be like my my favorite 3D Zelda. Um, it just barely edged out uh, Ocarina of Time. 
Uh, I still like Link to the Past better, and I really enjoyed Link Between Worlds as well. But uh, this one was... It's beautiful. It's a work of art. Nintendo put a lot of heart and thought into this. I like how in-depth they get with the... Uh, um, you know, with equipment. Uh, some people have problems with breaking equipment. I did at first, but then I just used it to my advantage later on in the game. Uh, and I didn't care for the horseback riding parts of this game at all. So when I was forced to ride a horse, I didn't really care for it. Um, so I mostly traveled by foot and stuff like that. So, uh, But this is one hell of a Zelda game and probably the best Zelda game on a on a console in quite some time. Uh, I'd have to say, for me, the last great Zelda game I played before this that wasn't on a handheld was Ocarina of Time. That's just me personally. Uh, Link Between Worlds is the exception that recently came out that I really liked. So, yeah. Number four, Zelda Breath of the Wild. Number three is something I spent a lot of time with. Uh, really enjoyable nice break from normal gaming and that is Stardew Valley this is the uh, collector's edition or aka it's just the physical edition that you can actually get is the PS4 version and includes uh, some nice goodies in here you know a map a manual and a soundtrack which is it's just really cool you don't see that often in new day games here uh, but uh, I think Harvest Moon, that was the direct inspiration I know for this game. Uh, lots of depth, lots of fun. Uh, you know, you can do romance, you can marry, you can have kids, you can create a big ass farm. You can, uh, there's kind of a story mode to it, so within three years you can accomplish something from your dead grandfather. Um, but, uh, the, the fishing was difficult, but you eventually got used to it. Um, and I just liked the, uh, the personalities of everybody in the town. It was just fun to learn about. It was fun to get lost in this game and create my very own farm just the way I wanted. I focused on produce, not so much animals, except for, you know, chickens. I'll do chickens. They're easy. Uh, but, yeah, so I feel like this was a very strong game. Um, uh, so yeah, number th yeah. number three, Stardew Valley. All right, number two, one and number two were was a huge fight. Um, I couldn't decide which one deserved the top spot as I enjoyed them both immensely. Um, but uh, it's really hard to say. I'm gonna, I'm even conflicted at this point in. Uh, while filming this video as I thought I made up my mind beforehand uh, <laughs> uh, but I'm just gonna go ahead with what I decided before um, and just go ahead and number this as number two but could very easily be number one so and that's uh, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 um, I'm still playing this game I have beaten it um, finished the you know went through the ending and the credits and everything and just went back so I can do more in the game uh, this game is huge and beautiful so much to do uh, fantastic characters I mean really good characters I mean the characters in this um, <laughs> it, it feels like I'm when I, when I was gushing back in the uh, what was it five years ago six years ago when I was gushing about Xenoblade Chronicles 1 um, Monolith Soft knows how to write characters and this this was fantastic uh, the the story behind it I yeah find it better than Xenoblade Chronicles 1 um, and I'm sorry if you see me pausing a lot, it's me thinking before I blurt out any spoilers, which I'm trying to avoid completely. So if I pause a lot, I apologize. Um, I love the battle system in this game. I uh, had a lot of fun with it, a lot of experimenting, uh, the ways I want to do things, you know, where you can uh, 
just mainly focus on chain attacks or where you're doing uh, the the whole break topple launch smash moves and stuff like that it, it was a ton of fun um, I really got invested in all the main characters uh, and it wasn't necessarily just Rex here you know in the front here your main protagonist but but Nia is she was very interesting I, I liked learning about her or learning about the vast history of, of Pyra and Mithra um, you know the various other characters too I, I like how they put Rock back here I won't say much more than that I think that's Van Damme right there actually yeah that is Van Damme um, but uh, Zeke you know when you first run into him you're like who is this tune but you learn about him and he is so much more than what he leads to be early on in the game. Uh, this this was fantastic, guys. Uh, they lived up to the soundtrack. I I think I would say the first game soundtrack was a, slightly better than this one, but uh, but this one was fantastic. Um, I highly suggest this. Um, I think you could run through the story in about 60 hours if you wanted to. Uh, but I think tend to be most people won't complete the game until roughly the 90 to 100 hour mark and if you really want to do everything that includes unlocking all the blades which is a real pain in the ass and that's part of the gripe to this game is unlocking rare blades which is random yeah, I digress on that uh, uh, shit I lost my train of thought <laughs> uh, uh, Great game. I'm not going to talk anything about the ending or anything like that. I'm not going to tell you whether I liked it or not. I'll save that for another time or if I talk with other fellow YouTubers about this game. Anyways, number two, Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Number one, shouldn't be any surprise to any of my subscribers, and that is, of course, Persona 5. Um, big fan of the Persona series, and this one... Uh, this one blew it out of the water. I mean, in my eyes, I believe this is the best Persona game. Now, that's a big argument amongst many people. Some people feel that 4 was better, and some of the older school guys will feel that 3 is the best. Um, and that's cool. That's cool. I, I'm good with that. <laughs> but uh, this one's characters the character development for each character was amazing I, I can't gush enough about how much I liked each of these characters I know there were plenty of people who didn't care for some of these characters especially uh, Ryuji here but he ended up being one of my favorites um, <laughs> I had too much fun uh, including the, the slight mascot style character you know, when I first saw previews for this game, I was like, oh man, I'm gonna hate the fucking cat. It's gonna annoy me. It's gonna be like Teddy again. No, Morgana was a great character. Great character. I, I really appreciated that. Uh, the way this ended and the, the whole, you know, story to be told was, was fantastic. Music was stellar. I think that's the only thing that maybe Persona 4 had an edge over this one was was in the music department because Persona 4's soundtrack is bar none the, the best from the SMT series but this one was really good um, yeah I can't <laughs> I mean I have the poster over here on the wall so it, it, it got enshrined on the wall so that's it's fantastic so Emperor Fox's game of the year 2017 is Persona 5, uh, followed closely by Xenoblade Chronicles 2. So, anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this little video, and thanks for watching.